Uh, hello everybody. Um, well, usually to start the talk, the speaker should uh, introduce himself. I mean, it's considered good practice. Now I know that most of you already know this part, so I've tried to change something without inventing anything in order to be to make it less boring. Mm, anyway, I promise it will be short. And okay, let's start. So my name is Sabrina Scuri. Uh, I'm from Politecnico of Milan in Italy. And uh, well, I have a background in, let's say, dark arts. Since in 2006, uh, I obtained a, an high school diploma in advertising. Then uh, I tried to find redemption by going to the university, where I earned uh, a master's degree in communication design. But uh, let me spend just a few words to explain what a communication designer does because I know that this profession is um, often subject to misunderstanding. Basically, uh, our, main, our main expertise consists in finding uh, the solution to deliver messages or provide content in um, the most uh, effective and clear way possible. This content can be information, <coughs> stories, um, rules, prescriptions, they can uh, um, take several forms from uh, storytelling to advertising and can be delivered by means of different um, communication channels, print based, web based, and so on. But, let, but let's go ahead. Um, after graduation, I started to collaborate with my um, advisor and the research group DCXC on a research project aimed at promoting and announcing the natural and cultural heritage um, of a rural area near Milan. And, well, um, I really enjoyed this experience within the scientific community, so uh, I decided to apply for uh, the PhD program in design. And now we are here. This is <laughs> the third and last year of my PhD, so I'm approaching to finish this path. And, well, generally speaking, my research um, addressed the topic of the predictive communication of territory. The predictive communication um, consists of the set of uh, communication actions aimed at um, preparing for and anticipating the on-site experience. So basically, it is the first contact we have with the place and especially with the tourist destination since it fosters the development of the so-called destination image and uh, more in general it affects um, our mental image of a given place. I started this research uh, from the assumption that to better understand the real identity of a place, uh, to get in touch with its genius logic, we, we need to, um, to visit it, to uh, physically explore uh, a place. So that's why my, my research uh, focuses um, or address the, the topic of immersive communication. Specifically, I'm interested in those web-based communication formats which are able to generate a deep sense of cognitive and perceptual immersion in a story or a computer-generated environment. But, okay, why should a communication designer do research on the topic of immersive communication? Well, nowadays, um, immersion is uh, mm, usually presented as the future of communication. Many professionals, but also scholars, um, seem to agree with, uh, with this claim. Nevertheless, it is very hard to find a unique definition of immersive communication and almost impossible to identify a possible guideline to um, develop or assess an immersive communication project. So basically, this is the reason why I'm interested in the topic. But to better frame the issue, I need to give you more context. So um, let's take a look to what lies behind the, the concept of, uh, of immersion. Basically, the topic can be uh, addressed from two main perspectives. On the one hand, there is a kind of um, technology-driven uh, point of view, which basically considers immersion as the result of using immersive technologies, and uh, it is by far the most widespread approach uh, to the topic. Uh, people indeed uh, usually relate immersion to virtual reality, which in its turn um, use the term immersive to define what technology <coughs> delivers from an objective point of view. On the other hand, there is a second school of thought uh, which considers immersion in terms of perceptual and cognitive absorption. Um, this um, kind of non-technical point of view um, concerns the way uh, content are displayed and characterize the approach of those who deal, for instance, with storytelling. This is exactly this second uh, perspective that I've adopted as a frame of reference uh, to, to investigate the phenomenon of immersion. 
I made this choice because, as I said, I'm interested in the predictive communication, uh, or in other words, the first contact with the territory that usually takes place on the web. Nowadays, uh, the context of web offers a bunch of possibilities to gain this kind of, let's say, um, <coughs> cognitive immersion. An immersion that concerns uh, that, um, the way content are displayed and how uh, people interact with them. So, in this context, we, we should talk about immersive technologies rather than, uh, um, sorry, uh, immersive languages rather than immersive technologies. But pay attention, this does not mean that I don't care, I don't mind about technologies. Simply, uh, I'm trying to move the focus. But, um, let me explain. The ongoing development of um, web technologies um, is leading to uh, uh, the, um, the multimedia convergence, fostering the combination overlapping and blending of different media content. This experimentation with several content, several media, results in the rise of new hybrid formats which exploit the possibilities <coughs> offered by um, web technologies in order to provide users with new ways of engaging with content. Sorry. So now, while, while, uh, while browsing a website, users want to be completely absorbed by the content provided. They expect to interact naturally and smoothly with, um, with the content, and um, their cognition and perceptions must be completely engrossed by the experience. So in other words, today, users must feel themselves immersed in uh, the digital space created by, by the website. But let me take a step back. I use the term hybrid to define uh, this kind of formats because they combine traditional communication forms like um, journal article or video documentary with uh, the specific features of, of web, interactivity, multimedia, nonlinear structure, <coughs> and so on. That's how um, um, journal article uh, becomes uh, an uh, a multimedia digital long form, as the well-known uh, Snowfall, and um, a traditional video documentary turns into an interactive web documentary, like uh, uh, Inside the Disaster, Haiti, that is uh, um, a, a first-person simulation based on um, uh, documentary footage from Haiti and uh, real-life decision scenarios. In this project, um, the user uh, has uh, an active role is not uh, a passive observer. Rather, he acts, uh, he, he acts inside the disaster. To start the experience, he has to uh, choose uh, the perspective from which experience the, the, the earthquake. So as a journal, uh, journalist, uh, a night worker, or a survivor um, that is living the disaster uh, in real time, he is asked to um, play actions and make decisions that will um, affect the future events in the narrative. So basically, Inside the Disaster is an example of how this is, is possible to uh, achieve immersion simply by uh, augmenting a traditional documentary with, um, in this example, um, gaming um, gamification techniques and uh, um, nonlinear structures, so basically with interactivity. So that's my claim. I think that now we need and we're ready to understand uh, the phenomenon, the nature of immersion uh, within uh, the context of web in order to foster uh, a more conscious, a more well uh, design practice and perhaps to, to drive future developments of uh, web technologies. So uh, taking into account this, uh, this context, the research question I'm attempting to answer is this. How can we achieve immersion on the web? Or in other words, how can we um, develop an immersive communication project and uh, what are the tools at our disposal? My first aim consists um, in identifying the main web-based uh, immersive formats, or rather uh, the previously mentioned hybrid formats that can be used to tell stories or events related to places. The second purpose uh, is to define possible categories of immersive modules. Basically, a module is a multimedia package which consists of more than one medium in combination with interactivity. I use the term modules because they are um, 
single unit with their own uh, rules uh, and uh, standards that can be freely combined within different kind of formats. So, for instance, um, a 300 degree interactive panoramic or a full screen audio gallery are examples of uh, immersive <coughs> modules. Last but not least, um, I'm attempting to I, I'm attempting, I, I did, identified um, some factors that um, may affect or foster the feeling of immersion. These factors um, relate both to interactivity and to the kind of representation used to display a given content. Basically, they are uh, the features that uh, um, make a, a format or a module immersive and taken together represent a set of guidelines um, to develop and evaluate an immersive communication project. This is the list of uh, uh, the 17 immersive factors identified. They are grouped in uh, five categories uh, related respectively to the amount of control the user has uh, on a website. Is a sensory involvement, I mean, the quality number and consistency of the sensory information provided by the website. They uh, relate also to the extent to which the website is able to isolate users <coughs> from uh, the real world. To the realism, or in other words, the fidelity and consistency of good content and the appearance, their appearance. And um, the last category is the special understanding factors, which um, um, represent the extent to which uh, the website fosters special uh, awareness, elicit proper projective responses, and supports users in developing uh, a mental map of its structure. These factors uh, have been identified through um, a, liter a review of the literature concerning the different fields that uh, investigate uh, the phenomenon of immersion, but this uh, final list um, is mainly based on the work by uh, Whitmer and Singer um, about the, the measurement of presence in virtual reality environments, and this is the, the main reference. Uh, well, in my hypothesis, an immersive communication project must not necessarily include all of this factor. Anyway, uh, I guess that a project should be more immersive the more factors it involves. But to better explain these factors, let me give you uh, an example. This is The Last Hunt, a project by the National Film Board of Canada. It basically consists of an interactive uh, photo essay to which uh, a Canadian photographer tells the story of his grandfather's last hunting, uh, last hunting expedition. Um, this project involves several immersive factors, most related to interaction. The first one concerns the degree of control, uh, the, the mode of control. Uh, indeed, the user can explore the whole website simply by scrolling the page. The single, scroll, um, the single page long scrolling is a, a well-practiced method uh, of interacting with this kind of website, um, so the, the user is not required to learn new actions to perform. Another interesting feature um, is the use of uh, the curtain effect, which consists in um, revealing or concealing content <coughs> as users scrolls the page, as you can see in the demo. Um, well, this, this effect um, gives continuity uh, to, to the browsing experience because the content are smoothly blended in the web page. And it also uh, creates a sense of mystery because um, as stories unfold, uh, as uh, um, the curtain scroll um, rise. Moreover, um, Another feature uh, specific of this characteristic of this uh, website is the use of the parallax scrolling that uh, creates a sense of depth and uh, um, an illusion of movement. This technique uh, can also be used to um, suggest a hierarchy of information since different contents lie uh, on different levels. So, uh, mm, I suggest that formats, modules, and factors are the main tools uh, to develop and evaluate uh, an immersive communication project. Therefore, um, their um, identification and um, categorization uh, represent a first step toward uh, answering my research question. 
Well, uh, considering the nature of the phenomenon, the phenomenon under uh, investigation, and uh, um, well, considering the phenomenon, I, I've adopted um, a phenomenological approach uh, um, to the inquiry. The possible definition for immersive communication and set of its main features have been identified uh, through a uh, comprehensive literature review. Then, uh, taking into account this uh, preliminary result, uh, I started to look at the state of the art with the aim of uh, identifying an um, existing example of uh, immersive communication project. So I collected a set of the best practice and carried out a case studies analysis uh, in order to uh, find categories of immersive forms. <coughs> now uh, I will present you some of the results of uh, this case study analysis um, in order to provide an overview of uh, the main um, web-based immersive uh, communication uh, formats. And I will describe them by showing some of the best practice collected. But um, for, uh, before I do that, uh, let me just point out that uh, um, even if each case study has been uh, assigned to one of the five categories of formats identified, these categories should not be considered as uh, rigid boxes. As we will see, the boundaries between them are, uh, are blurred um, because they organize elements that, has, uh, that have uh, an hybrid nature. For this reason, um, I cannot uh, give uh, a formal definition of each format. Later, I will um, provide uh, an overall description of their possible immersive features, which actually are the real uh, subject of my inquiry. The first category is represented by digital long form, an evolution of the traditional journal article, which aims to provide uh, in-depth information about the topic. So a uh, digital long form can be used to uh, tell uh, stories or events related to a place, as it is the case of the last stunt, the digital long form previously uh, seen. But um, it could also um, serve as um, serve to um, deepen cultural and social issue uh, specific of, it, of a territory. And this is uh, exactly the aim of a game of shark and minnow. Okay. Um, a digital long form that integrate text uh, uh, with multimedia elements that are uh, placed at appropriate points in the narrative in order to gain and to keep the user's attention. Moreover, the combination of uh, different uh, audiovisual content uh, enriches the story and makes the scene more vivid. Here, all the multimedia contents uh, appear uh, in the scene by means of several transition, transition effects like fade in and fade out. And you can see in the demo, background video, uh, videos play automatically. Therefore, user does not need to, bro uh, to stop uh, browsing in order to, to watch them. The second category is represented by a virtual tour uh, that is a, re a realistic representation of a place or an environment that the user can uh, virtually explore. <coughs> For this reason, uh, the, the main features of a virtual tour is uh, the realism of the scene. An example of this kind of format is uh, uh, Lisboa 360, uh, a website that provides a set of uh, interactive panoramics of the most beautiful Lisbon's viewpoints. Here, Audio is, is used to enhance the experience. Indeed, uh, each panorama has its own soundscape that combined with uh, um, the full screen uh, mode, the wide field of view, uh, makes the scene more surrounding and fosters the feeling of immersion. Can you see the audio? But the feeling of immersion can be also uh, enhanced by stimulating proprioceptive and vestibular feedbacks which could result from uh, the user's ability to orient sensory perception. That is to say, uh, the possibility to, to modify the viewpoint and look in almost every direction from a first-person perspective. Usually, virtual tours offer um, several additional materials, um, such as text, still images, or videos, um, in order to provide background information um, and to make 
uh, the content to end the scene more realistic. Mm. Well, virtual tours uh, fall uh, into main, uh, into two main <coughs> categories. The interactive panoramics, like Lisboa 360, and virtual work, mm, like this project uh, created with uh, the collaboration of uh, Google. Virtual works usually um, allow users to um, look at the virtual environment from different perspective and scale in order to foster <coughs> spatial, aware, spatial awareness. In this project, spatial awareness is enhanced um, by means of different uh, um, tools. User uh, is indeed provided with uh, a map <coughs> and um, some orientation and navigation aids. These um, interface controls uh, also um, allow user to anticipate or uh, predict the results of the, uh, its intera is, uh, interactions and ensure the immediacy of control. Furthermore, the voiceover uh, narration simulates isolation and helps to drive the user attention. That let's listen how. Again, just to Welcome. Okay. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, that is to say, the Quarantium, one of the most lively and creative neighborhoods in Marseille. My name is Christophe. I'm the artist who created this night walk, a walk, or should I say, a safari, in the art of the urban savannah, tracking down ephemeral art, unexpected encounters, and incredible stories. Let's go. Follow me. Let your eyes linger on the walls. I take care of your eyes. Okay, the third category is represented by uh, interactive web, uh, web documentary, an evolution of the traditional video documentary, which stresses the nonlinear and interactive nature of the online experience. Um, instead of uh, a unique and linear na uh, narrative, the, the story is broken up uh, into um, several fragments. So the user has an active degree of control because um, he's given the possibility to, um, of choosing what parts of the story um, to see and in, in what order. Uh, well, let's take as, as an example uh, this project, the Journey to the End of Call, which is a web-based, uh, uh, web um, interactive interactive world documentary uh, that described the, the poor uh, living condition of uh, coal miners in, uh, in China. Here the user is allowed to choose from multiple entry points and simultaneous storylines. As you can see, this is this example. Now it has to select the question to ask the manner. Consequently, um, the cost of interaction simulates isolation and also helps to, do, to keep the user attention. Basically, a web documentary um, tells real events and situation uh, and does that by using uh, interactive technology in order to engage the audience. So um, it has a narrative but not fictional character. 
for this reason, um, the realism of content is one of the intrinsic characteristics of, of a web documentary. Uh, although uh, web documentaries are mainly video, sometimes they can use also uh, a combination of still images, uh, audio and text in order to enrich the narrative. <coughs> Let's take again, again the example of uh, um, Inside the Disaster IT. Here, uh, the wide use of video combined with um, pictures, audio, add interactivity and emotional content is what contributes to evoke feelings and to affect uh, the user's mood. But uh, let's look at the, um, the demo in order to understand how the combination of realism of content and psychological fidelity can really affect <coughs> the feeling of immersion. 24 hours after a massive earthquake reduced the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince to rubble, you arrive in the neighboring Dominican Republic with a mission. Create a two-minute feature story on the disaster for a major network. Your job is to dig deeper than the stand-up journalists and find the truth. Yes, minutes are a lifetime. This is the first part. That serves just an After introduction. On road, uh, you as you can see, it's completely based on still images and uh, as also the narration. Images um, are, um, have been modified, as you can see, in the edge. But when the user uh, starts to uh, explore and interact with <coughs> the um, some other content. Um, you continue filming as the food distribution becomes increasingly chaotic. On screen, the main and formal representation is the video here. The quality is not high. Uh, it's characterized by the less quality. By a less quality uh, to, what do you do? To underline the feeling and the, the sense of drama. Okay, uh, the first the first category of formats uh, is represented by uh, visual narrative. This category is probably uh, the broader one because it collects projects that um, are um, apparently very different from each other. As the name of the category suggests, uh, the main narrative uh, is either a video or a photo, uh, which is usually um, presented in full screen mode and combined with audio. But the entire story could be also told in a single narrative form and presented uh, with a linear structure. In visual narratives, interaction, interaction is quite limited or completely absent. Therefore, um, usually this kind of project uh, does not involve um, um, immersive factors related to, to interaction. The Serengeti Lion is an example of visual narrative, a project uh, realized by the National Geographic. It is completely based on uh, um, videos and uh, a slideshow of static images. Here, immersion is made possible by the quality and the richness of the information provided, information that is both visual and auditory. And, um, the use, again, the use of the full screen mode makes the scene more surrounding and fostering the feeling of emotion. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, <clears throat> the last category of formats is represented by uh, the story maps. A story map is basically a tool used to represent location-based narrative, uh, narratives like uh, journeys or pet. Um, indeed, it allows to, to show special temporal structures of content and the relationship with places, as we can see <coughs> in uh, uh, Riding the New Silk Road. Here, the combination, uh, the multimedia contents appear on the page by means of motion parallax and uh, soft transition effects. And this result in uh, um, an increased sense of continuity uh, given to the person experience. Well, clearly, a map uh, is a means to, uh, mean to organize and present information. 
for this reason, uh, a basic characteristic of each uh, story, of every uh, story, story map is uh, uh, its ability to foster the special, hour, special awareness. Indeed, usual maps um, are used um, as navigation aid inside uh, projects like Russia Left Behind. But here, uh, map serves ser also um, as a tool to access content. As you can see, uh, the user can explore different sections of the story simply by selecting uh, the interactive uh, point of interest placed, placed on the map. So this results with um, an increased degree of, users control of, co of the user control of con over content. So that's what um, I've done till now. Basically, uh, I attempted to frame the phenomenon of immersion within the boundaries of the web uh, by identifying immersive formats, modules, and factors. But now uh, I need to validate uh, these results. To this aim, um, I'm, I'm testing, currently I'm testing uh, the user's response to some of the case studies gathered uh, with the aim, um, of the first aim of um, evaluate their level of immersion and also um, to verify if and to what extent uh, these factors plays, uh, play a role uh, in generating this kind of, uh, of feeling. That's why I'm here. I mean, um, uh, here at MITI, uh, I found the, <coughs> the expertise in uh, the field of human computer interactions that I need to, um, to reach this goal. Finally, to conclude, um, well, I, I want to point out that um, my aim basically consists in. Um, try to, um, can I say it, um, okay, let me use this term, try to reveal a kind of, ta of tacit knowledge. That's why uh, I titled this talk web-based immersivity setting the field. Um, I started this, uh, this research by exploring the state of the art without uh, preconception and I must confess without a clear research question on my mind. Um, but while observing um, some of those projects, I felt myself immersed in what I was seeing. I personally experienced uh, this kind of absorption, even if I was not able to uh, understand or define it. Basically, that's how my research question has come to, to light. Well, my, my purpose could, could seem quite ambitious, but this work doesn't have the purpose <coughs> of being conclusive. Um, my purpose is not, let's say, um, dogmatic. This work is just a first attempt to, to provide an overview of the phenomenon of, uh, of immersion, and I hope it, it may become a way to foster further immersions in the field. Interesting, at least for me. <laughs> I would like to ask if there are any questions. Um, thanks for the talk. Uh, at the end, you were talking a little bit about uh, validating sort of level of immersion. Yeah. Um, and the roles the different factors play. Uh, so have you come across any reliable methods? Yeah, well, um, I'm doing the test with, by using uh, questionnaires. Uh, specifically, I used to, uh, to assess the, the level of immersion. I'm using uh, two um, scales um, realized by well, the, the first one that assess the, um, is used to assess the level of uh, physical pres the sense of physical presence in uh, basically in, um, virtual reality environments, but has been used also uh, in the context of, of web and is uh, uh, the presence questionnaire made by Kim and Bjork. Kim and, Bjork. 
And the second scale is uh, the flow short scale. Uh, I don't remember the name of the author, sorry. <laughs> but uh, well, I'm using these two scales to um, evaluate the level of immersion. Uh, for what concern uh, regarding the, the immersive format, I developed uh, an ad hoc questionnaire, and I will, I'm using this questionnaire, but uh, it has not been validated. So um, the result collected by, by this questionnaire, this, second, this third questionnaire, um, will be used just insight and suggestion, but that's it for me. <laughs> Would you say questionnaires are the, the most reliable method out there right now? Yeah, because um, this kind of immersion, the feeling of immersion that uh, I'm trying to, to evaluate <coughs> is mm, subjective. And um, yeah, usually um, questionnaires are the main tool uh, used. For, for this kind of, uh, of test. <coughs> I know that there are other other tools, other kind of measures, physical measures, but, well, mm, I prefer to use uh, this kind of, uh, of tool. Do you have some suggestions, maybe, of how to evaluate well, I think the, the yeah. biofeedback oh, right. uh, yeah. aspect is, is interesting, but yeah. um, in the context of web, it might be, it might be you know, too much. Uh, so. mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't have any. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, some other uh, sort of comments. So, yeah, what? Mm -hmm. sorry. Are those uh, uh, Andrew? Uh, 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 not a well fun question yet, but maybe later. Later? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, one of the problems to use these questionnaires is they are actually evaluating the experience after that it happens. Yeah. So probably you are not getting the, let's say, the real senses of users. That's why probably the use of this technology that we're saying uh, in some times could actually evaluate and get the, the say the responses, the feeling responses of users exactly the moment that they are like happening. So that's probably certain kind of balance between use questionnaires and use these biometrics during the experience because actually this kind of technology can record the signals or can try to map the signals into emotion exactly the moment that they are happening. Yeah, I'm sure um, we know that users um, are usually not aware of their their feelings. Yeah, mm, and probably um, a combined method can be useful, a mixed method, um, because um, I also think that uh, post experience uh, um, responses are interesting because uh, collect uh, only the aspect that a user remember, and probably these are the aspects that. Mm, are more powerful to uh, to affect the user experience. Um, can you talk more about your uh, so in your factors of immersivity, uh, you have um, like a category called realism. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that and how it relates to uh, artistic experiences that might break realism in, in important ways but still uh, keep the user extremely immersed? Artistic experience? Yeah. You say, okay. Um, okay. Can, you, can you explain it better? Yeah, uh, so I, I was trying to find it during your talk and I can't seem to. Um, I think there was a French filmmaker uh, who did like a VR experience um, and also ported it to like a web mm -hmm. interactive thing. Um, and basically, uh, part of it you're like running through the forest um, 
a little bit kind of like the Google Maps thing. So there's like mm -hmm. a path and you're, you're moving through the forest. Um, and there's this drawn animated character mm -hmm. um, that's like walking along with you. Um, if you walk faster, the character walks faster. Um, and then uh, eventually like um, it gets maybe a little more tricky. And uh, then like if you look up, then the character kind of like floats up into the air. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I don't know, something like that that like uh, the forest was mapped with photos, so that's like highly realistic. Um, the movements of your view um, are realistic in the sense that they follow like how your head can move. Um, but the drawn character is very much um, an artistic layer over all of that. Um, and I think the artistic layer leads to more immersivity in this instance. Yeah, sure. Um, actually, uh I also uh, consider some more artistic projects. Uh, today I, I showed you some, just some examples, but uh, for instance, maybe you know, um, wait, let me <laughs> remember the name. Uh, it's uh, a Google Chrome experiment, uh, the wilderness downtown. Um, that is <coughs> basically an interactive, um, experiment to uh, present a music video but it's yeah it's more um, more I'll say artistic and there are also um, other visual narratives uh, especially I'm thinking about a project called <coughs> Studio Azzurro that is uh, uh, a group of artists, an Italian group of artists that is based on the visual the video representation of uh, some uh, aspects, historical aspects, traces, materials related to places. So yes, for sure, uh, I agree with you. Uh, artistic experiments are somehow um, more powerful to lead the, to the film animation, and I'm, I'm also considering how, this, this how, experiment. How does that fit in with uh, the realism factors? Yeah, but as I said, uh, a project should not um, involve all of these factors to be immersive. Uh, somehow, mm, the point is that um, I'm not able to uh, um, to say if a factor is more powerful than another. And actually, I think that um, their um, effectiveness depends on the combination of several several variables. So um, sometimes a project can be uh, completely unrealistic, but real, uh, really powerful because it involves other kind of factors. I hope I. Yeah. Okay. More questions. I was wondering because you first. Uh, started studying this field because you said that uh, you wanted to study that the first contact with the territory yeah. is online. So I was wondering if uh, from your last points if you have any advice on which one is the better approach. I know that probably a virtual tour <coughs> yeah. is the most, uh, yeah, it's the most the one that stands out. But um, I don't know, have you seen other examples of um, locations that are trying to promote themselves on the web that use some of these movies. yes um <coughs> and actually uh, i collected a lot of uh, projects uh, from portugal that use virtual tours in a very uh, effective way uh, the artist that developed uh, lisboa 360 uh, has also developed a lot of uh, projects uh, that present several cities in Portugal. And there is another interesting uh, project. Um, yeah, maybe I have internet. I would like to show you this um, if I have time yes, to. Yes, yes, you have. Yes. Ah, wait. Mm. Where is it? Okay, mm -hmm. on the plane. It is a single cidade and is um, uh, an interactive sound map that uses only uh, the audio. In order to um, describe the cultures and the identities of five cities in, uh, in Portugal, 
And it's interesting because the user can um, select different tracks and create its own uh, compilation. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a song. It's it. It's it. It's it. It's own song. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and for each uh, track, you can find some few uh, information that describe why this, this sound is related. To, uh, represent an aspect of the place. Uh, okay, sorry. <coughs> well, sorry, I forgot your question. <laughs> no, I was just wondering if are you going to try to kind of like give some guidelines for these kinds of, for example, okay, you're a tourism board, so this is, you should follow these, these parameters or these, this is the best approach you should take to design in your website. Yeah, I know, that's, I yeah. Uh, to go back to the, yeah. Mm. The why. <laughs> it was one of my first, uh, my first aims, but now uh, I cannot do that. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> I cannot. Probably it would be further development of this research, mm -hmm. but yeah, <coughs> should be a good result of, of this work. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, I, I have to say that yeah, I find your work very inspirational, and I understand that, you know, following from Mara's question, after you probably, s when we start research, we have a big, <laughs> big plan, and then you have to narrow to a very specific contribution, and I think just uh, a database of all these modules and format it is already enough. I mean, I and, and, and many people here were wish you know this was done also with other <coughs> you know location aware and other technologies. This is very very important and and is uh, is interesting what you said you know about setting the field. It's, there's a lot of tacit knowledge there, which it's the basis of design and art, and this is why we're different from engineering and science. They operate on the knowledge that is already yeah. exposed and then uh, sort of uh, progress that. But often <coughs> artists and designers have to just voice <laughs> what is already being used a yeah. lot in the field. And so, and uh, I think that's <coughs> great. And I think that those also links to Andrew's question is often arts, uh, arts projects already have these. Uh, modules or format but they are just used instinctively and so often artists do achieve these results and, and that's why artistic projects often are even more immersive than others but no one speaks them or quantifies them or analyzes them and I think that Sabrina's work is there you know kind of looking with the lens <laughs> at what has not been I'm trying <laughs> not been said so yeah this was not really a question it was more like a appreciation of your work and so if there are no further questions we thank you, thank you.